Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And today we're going to look back at the Marvel Hall H celebration. First things first, though, Deadpool and Wolverine has already flirted with a half a billion dollars and will probably come in second for the year behind Inside Out 2, which is at one and a half billion dollars, which is just amazing. So Disney is celebrating some wins right now. Now, even though Deadpool and Wolverine is making a crap ton of money, what it won't do is save the Marvel Universe. If you've seen this movie, and I hope you have because it's incredible, then you understand what I mean. It is a love letter to a cinematic universe now defunct, the Fox Universe. So it's up to Kevin Feige to pull out all the stops and revive a franchise that is sputtering. Which leads us to this year's San Diego Comic-Con and Hall H. And our first stop on the Marvel Hall H merry-go-round is Captain America Brave New World, a film that has been reportedly reshot multiple times, which is concerning because, let's face it, the cast is awesome. Tim Blake Nelson, Giancarlo Esposito, who's playing Sidewinder, the leader of the Serpent Society, Anthony Mackie, who, regardless of your take on his turn as Captain America, he can act. And if you don't think so, see Pain and Gain, the most underrated Michael Bay film out there. And then, if that is not enough for you, throw in Harrison Ford, and you have to think, how can they get this one wrong? I mean, you have to replace a legend like William Hart with another legend, Han Solo himself, so it seems like a no-brainer. It seems like this one should be easy, especially after seeing the chemistry between the cast while they were on stage at Hall H. When you have a cast that has that much love and respect for each other, and it comes off as genuine, you have to believe that they are putting everything they have into making the film, and that same chemistry will come out in those performances. So what's my reservation? Well... I remembered that I watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I remembered the writing, the narrative, the overt social messaging, the way in which that took over the series and how disappointing it was to be lectured to half the time. So the question becomes, what are we going to be delivered with this movie? An action-packed street-level spy thriller like Captain America Winter Soldier? Or are we going to be treated to an HR struggle session like we were in the series Falcon and Winter Soldier? Yes. We are getting the Red Hulk, and that means we may one day get the Incredible Hulk versus the Red Hulk in what should be the heavyweight matchup of all time. But, then again, this is just a teaser reveal. And it's a very controlled environment at San Diego. It's very controlled to present what you want to the world and what you want the world to see and take away. So for me, I'm going with cautious optimism when it comes to this film. However, this was not the film that had me scratching my head. That would be reserved for the Thunderbolts, with an asterisk. The cast seemed to be lost up on stage while answering questions or repeating their carefully prepared scripted responses. And of all the characters they could have chosen from the dozen or so iterations of the Thunderbolts, this is the list they landed on? Ghost? Maybe the winner for the most forgettable Marvel villain of all time? Black Widow? But really Black Widow too. Forgive me, I'm still a ScarJo fan who thinks she was done dirty after all that she gave to this franchise. Nothing against Florence. Incredible actress and will probably do a great job in the role, but we all have our favorites and I gotta be honest. Then we have Taskmaster, one of the most ridiculed and laughable villains. And listen, she was just a gender swap for the sake of a gender swap. And really, for me, when that happens, I lose all interest in the character. If it's for a reason, if it's for narrative purposes, then I can get behind it. But this wasn't the case. From all the Thunderbolt characters throughout all the generations of comics, they could have gone with Ghost Rider, the Green Goblin, Bullseye, Venom, Luke Cage, Deadpool, Doc Ock, Elektra, Rhino, Juggernaut, or Hawkeye, or even a hundred others. But we get the lineup we get. Some hits, some misses. However, it will be interesting to see the Sentry, the most powerful hero and sometimes villain, brought to the big screen, and I hope they do that one right. But what struck me the most, again, was the lack of excitement and enthusiasm from the cast as they were on stage. It just felt flat, which for me does not bode well for the film. The idea of something like a Hall H presentation at San Diego Comic-Con is to really build and then let loose the hype machine. And maybe it did not translate well on video, but speaking as someone who's been in Hall H multiple times and knows what it's like to be blown away and to be underwhelmed, the Thunderbolts with an asterisk left me feeling the latter. Up next, we got the first family of Marvel, the Fantastic Four, and the reveal of the title, 
first steps. What we know is that this film will be released in basically one year's time. Not much was revealed except for the cast, the four members of the Fantastic Four, including Pedro Pascal, whose casting has fans divided to this day, and Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm, who I think is perfect casting because she, in my opinion, is one of the most capable actresses in the world today. But that was it. A quick hit of celebrity appearance and gone. What we did get was a look at the aesthetics of the film. Very 1960s, very Flash Gordon, very Mystery Science Theater 3000, and, if I'm being honest, I think a perfect package choice to wrap the Fantastic Four into, because they are a callback to that time in American history, and they are an emulation of Jack Kirby and Stanley's artistic vision in something that fans will really appreciate. We did get some footage that looked like it was not quite yet done, but I think that was the choice they were going for, making it look like those old classroom projector films provided by the government to teach kids about patriotism and hygiene, and believe me, those were hilariously bad. But again, not much was shown, and what screenshots you can get out there on the web right now really do not give you much more to go on, and they really don't give it justice. But there was a slight reveal of Galactus as an actual being peering through the windows of a building, so at least we can say in this instance Marvel is learning from past mistakes. No cloud monster here. But Galactus is a challenge and everybody knows it. Bringing that to the big screen will be a monumental CGI task and one that cannot be anything less than perfect or else that's what the film would be remembered for. Nothing more. If they screw up Galactus, they won't care about Sue Storm or Pedro Pascal or Vanessa Kirby or, or Johnny Storm or the thing. They won't care about any of that. They won't care about the story. They won't care about the narrative. They won't care about the other special effects. If you screw up Galactus, you screw up the film. So buyer beware. We don't know what we're going to get. And hopefully they pour all their effort into getting this thing right. So again, not too much to get excited about except for the possibilities. And we'll all have to wait and see. So how do you follow up Marvel's first family? Well, you follow up with Kevin Feige introducing the Russo brothers who will return to helm the next two Avenger films, Avengers Secret Wars and Avengers Doomsday. As a fan, I cannot complain about this in any way. The Russos have delivered arguably the best films in the franchise, but the big announcement, which basically broke the internet, Dr. Doom will be played by Robert Downey Jr. That's right, the roof in Hall H basically blew off the San Diego Convention Center when RDJ pulled off his mask to reveal his presence. And I, like a lot of you, are torn. The emotional side of me, someone who considers RDJ one of the great actors of our time, someone who has played Louis Strauss, Tony Stark, Sherlock Holmes, Kirk Lazarus, Paul Avery, Wayne Gale, Charlie Chaplin, a role he should have won the Oscar for because despite Al Pacino's win for A Son of a Woman, RDJ's Chaplin and Denzel Washington's Malcolm X were far superior performances that year. But I digress. So yes, I get it. I'm even guilty of it myself, being absolutely stoked that Robert Downey Jr. will play Victor Von Doom. But after the initial joy and excitement wore off, I began to think, isn't this what most of us predicted would happen sooner or later? Did Marvel and Disney just go over to the glass case, which read break open only in case of emergency, just to pull out Robert Downey Jr.? I think they did. I think they realized that not only do they have to bring a great villain to the table, because let's face it, their Kang, he's gone and that was a disaster for them. But they needed to bring Gravitas back to the MCU. Is there a more respected, more beloved, more popular Marvel cast member than Robert Downey Jr.? No, there isn't. Are there a myriad of great actors who could have pulled off Victor Von Doom? Absolutely. Did Disney have to open up a whole new line of credit just to get RDJ to sign on a dotted line? You better believe it. He's probably getting a minimum a minimum of $50 million. And that is a very conservative estimate based on what they already got for Infinity War and Endgame. So I'm left split down the middle. Is this a great casting choice? A great piece of fan service? Or is this a Hail Mary? A desperate attempt to use the nostalgia and absolutely earned love and devotion of Iron Man as a pop culture icon to save a franchise that can't seem to get out of its own way? I'm leaning towards it being a brilliant stroke of creativity by two of the best directors to how many Marvel projects since its inception, but I could be wrong. But that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you in favor of Robert Downey Jr. becoming Victor Von Doom, or do you think it's more publicity than creative decision? And what film reveal got you the most excited coming out of Comic-Con this year? And if you want more comic book fun and movie reviews, check out my playlist by clicking on the thumbnails at the end of this video. And if you did like this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps out the channel every week. I thank you for watching it. And remember, I'm still your reluctant gringo from south of the border. Salute and I wave out.